Breaking news from WRAL. Coverage you can count on. Within the last half hour, Capitol Boulevard near downtown reopened after a crash. What police say could have been a factor in that crash that left a man dead? And here it comes. We have drier air just to our north on the other side of this front. We're going to see that nice change in our atmosphere starting later today. Florida is getting ready for yet another hurricane, Hurricane Milton. This comes less than two weeks after Helene slammed the Gulf Coast. The evacuations beginning today as the governor there issues a state of emergency. Plus, more help is headed to the western part of North Carolina. The new donations making their way to that part of the state and the additional support people will receive. Still collecting, still coming in. Folks, you are still helping out there, and they certainly need it still. As we start this Monday together, thanks for making us part of it. I'm Jeff Hogan. And I'm Renee Chu. Great to have you with us. We're hanging on to the 80s for one more day, and then that cooler air will get here. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner in the WRO Severe Weather Center. A pleasant start to our Monday. It really does feel nice already. We've seen our dew point start to fall. That's the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. That's what makes it feel muggy or comfortable. We take a look at those stats right now. Our dew point's at 59, so that feels really good. Temperature at 62 also feels comfortable. It's going to feel chillier, though, over the next few days. This is a live look at RDU where skies are mostly clear this morning. Hour by hour, nice low 60s to start with. At lunchtime, 79. We do climb to 83, which is above normal for this time of year. But I'll show you when we could see highs in the 60s coming up. Let's touch on Hurricane Milton. Now with winds at 100 miles per hour, it's moving uh, to the east at around 8 miles per hour. It is likely to make landfall late Wednesday night, early Thursday morning as a Category 3 major hurricane on the west coast of Florida, just south of where Helene made landfall. We're talking about major storm surge a lot of flooding rain and, of course, uh, strong damaging winds with this storm. We'll talk more about the uh, impacts there coming up. The forecast fan is south of the coast of North Carolina, but we'll still have rip current danger, the potential for some light rain and some possible erosion. We'll go over that coming up in more detail. Coming up, Ken. Elizabeth, at 601, we're going to start out with this live look at I-40 and Aviation Parkway this morning. You can see traffic is picked up but moving nicely in both directions. Our live sensors are not picking up any major delays on any of our major roadways. We are following a serious crash that was reported in the last half hour on uh, Glasscock uh, East Street eastbound there in Wake Forest Road this morning. In the immediate area, not seeing any particular problems, but we're going to keep watching it for you just to be on the safe side. Listen, you're heading out this morning. Just know you can pop us on on the radio at 101.5 HD3. You also have a couple of other options as well. 99.3 FM in Raleigh and 96.5 FM in Durham. Terrible incident we've been following for the last several hours and within the last half hour, Capitol Boulevard reopened after a crash killed a man driving. The crash happened around 2.30 this morning. Law enforcement closed that street near Wake Forest Road for about three hours. Raleigh police say the driver hit a bridge support. Authorities also say they believe speed was a factor in this crash. Mandatory evacuations are expected to begin today in parts of Florida, including the Tampa Bay area ahead of Hurricane Milton. As Elizabeth just showed you, the storm could make landfall as a Category 3 on Wednesday. People in Florida are still recovering after Helene tore through less than two weeks ago. The aftermath still visible in many neighborhoods and communities. Furniture, mattresses and other household items just piled up along streets. More help is coming to Western North Carolina. President Biden is sending an additional 500 active duty troops to that area, bringing the total number of active duty troops there to 1,500 now. WRO's Kelsey Coffey joins us from the State Farmers Market now. And Kelsey, this comes as people here in the Triangle continue to gather more needed supplies. <laughs> Yes, a lot of people have been bringing in donations here to the state farmer's market and a truck will arrive here in just a few hours to pick up thousands of supplies. So you can see some of those items are already prepped here outside, dozens of cases of water, and then there's even more supplies inside the building there. Organizers submitted these photos of the items they've collected. They're estimating that they will pack up 225 bins today to send off to Western North Carolina. This comes 
Jones as President Biden just approved more federal support for Helene recovery. 500 active duty troops were ordered to head to North Carolina last night, and more than $137 million in federal assistance is being used to support these survivors. More money is on the way, too, so we'll be here when uh, people arrive this morning to uh, drop off those supplies in the truck and send it on off to Western North Carolina. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Raleigh. Today we expect to get new information about how the devastation caused by Helene could play a role in the November election. State Board of Elections Executive Director Karen Brinson Bell will give an update at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Bell has said the state will do its best to start in-person early voting on time in western North Carolina. But some changes may be necessary. Some voting locations may have been damaged or may now be totally inaccessible. Elections offices in 12 counties are still working to reopen. In-person early voting in the state starts October 17th. Jeff, still keeping an eye on the power outages that we are watching here in the WRL Live Center. Most of them, again, in western North Carolina. You can come a little closer so we can show you, again, the western part of the state. That's where we're seeing about 134,000-ish customers still without power right now. And one thing I want to highlight is from the Duke Energy Facebook page. They're essentially highlighting some of the stories from the line workers that are out there in the process of restoring the electricity to so many people who live out there. The video you're seeing here is them putting up a power pole to, again, increase the uh, the amount of power that to the people that are out there right now because so many people are in the dark right now. Jeff Brooks with Duke Energy saying that right now the restoration will appear slower as you continue to look at that map simply because right now teams are going to those hard to reach areas trying to restore the power just like this. Buncombe County officials say they need more volunteers and donations but not tourists. They are asking those folks to stay away right now. Unless you live in one of our small communities that have been so badly damaged by the storm, like Swananoa, Barnardville, and Garen Creek, please stay out. The traffic volume is severely impacting crews' ability to respond. Buncombe County leaders are also warning people to stay out of the rivers until the EPA confirms they are safe, and that includes using that river water for flushing. Today marks one year since the deadly Hamas attack on Israel. More than 41,000 people have been killed since the war began. People around the world are honoring those killed during the attack on that music festival in Israel. And that includes vigils in Tel Aviv, Berlin, London and Paris. There are local services planned today, including one at Chabad of Durham Chapel Hill. There's going to be um, a lot of things that we're doing to commemorate and then again at night, a vigil. Um, so this is the time that the Jewish community is digging deep within. Um, but like we've seen throughout our Jewish history, coming out more re resilient, more resolved and empowered to continue to share light and spread an act of goodness in the world. Protesters in cities such as Barcelona and Sydney rallied yesterday against the war in the Middle East and the humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip. And Renee, in the meantime, the Israeli military is ramping up strikes on Lebanon. At least four suburban neighborhoods were hit Sunday, according to officials there. This comes after Hezbollah launched rockets into Israel, hitting the country's third largest city. Israeli airstrikes in Beirut are the most intense bombardment of the Lebanese capital since Israel escalated its campaign against Hezbollah last month. This morning, homeowners across the state will have the chance to hear more about a proposed insurance rate increase. During a public hearing, the State Rate Bureau will share why it wants to increase homeowners insurance by 42 percent. Commissioner Mike Causey will also share his reason for rejecting the proposal in February. After the hearing, he'll have 45 days to decide on a possible insurance rate hike. The hearing starts at 10 a.m. at the Department of Insurance on Beachleaf Court in Raleigh. Today, the NC Department of Transportation will begin resurfacing NC-12 in Kerala. Travel on the Outer Banks will see some single-lane closures in that area. All the work is expected to be finished by early next month. The DOT reminds anyone driving through that construction zone to be cautious and aware of their surroundings.
Today, Granville County school leaders will share the final draft to consolidate two schools. They're considering closing Granville Central High School. Students would be assigned to South Granville and JF Webb. They are also thinking about closing Butner Stern Middle. Those students would be reassigned to GC Hawley Middle, which would then move to Granville Central's campus. If this plan is approved, a public hearing will be held later this month. A final decision could be made in November. 10 after 6 right now on your Monday. Roads are washed out, businesses just shells of what they once were, and thousands of people still without power and water. How communities in Mitchell and Yancey counties are rallying together to recover from Helene. And a scary emergency landing in Las Vegas over the weekend. Fire on a frontier flight. Passengers describe the terrifying moments on board. And meteorologist Elizabeth a beautiful day for today. Yeah, looking great. Today is the day that our cold front comes through, so we're going to start to notice the changes. The dew point, the humidity's already started to drop, but I'll show you how refreshing it'll feel through the rest of the week coming up. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. It is 612 on a very pleasant morning here as we're looking through downtown Durham. Our skies are mainly clear. We've had a good bit of low cloud cover and fog develop. That was yesterday <laughs> across our area the last several days. Um, and it looks a lot, uh, a lot clearer this morning than we've seen lately. We do have fog showing up here on the uh, icon in Irwin. 61 degrees there, 61 in Tarboro, 61 in Southern Pines. So low 60s as you're stepping out the door. So dog walking forecast feeling good out there this morning. Temperatures will climb into the low 80s for high later this afternoon and we'll see mostly sunny skies all day. The humidity has already started to fall a little bit this morning may fall even more once our front comes through around mid uh, midday to early afternoon. I'll show you why we may not see any rain with this front coming up. And Elizabeth, happening now in the W.O. Traffic Center, we continue to watch that crash right there on uh, Glasscock Street at Wake Forest Road. We're not seeing any particular problems in that area, but I'll keep an eye on it for you. Uh, let's go outside, shall we? Give you a live look at I-40 and Rock Quarry Road. Definitely, traffic has definitely picked up quite a bit, but moving nicely in both directions. Traffic is constantly changing. When you're heading out, just tune us in at 101.5 HD3. We're getting another look at the damage left by Helene. This is spruce pine. Roads have been washed away by mudslides and many people are still without power and water. The town also says bears and yellow jackets are an issue in their recovery process. WRL's Destiny Patterson gives us a closer look on the ground from Mitchell and Yancey counties. <laughs> I'm wearing this mask here in Spruce Pine because of the dust that's in the area. People here tell me that this tangled web of trees was once a park in the area that's now been washed away by the floodwaters of Helene. We've traveled hundreds of miles from Raleigh to Asheville to Hendersonville, but primarily the small towns in between. Through our journey, there were still a few road closures that prevented us from getting to places like Chimney Rock and Lake Lure. Access to those areas is still primarily closed to the public, even more than a week after the storm. We also had some traffic along the way full of volunteers and family members concerned about the people here in Western North Carolina. At this point, there are still issues with power, water and communication in many areas. But one thing is consistent in each one, community support. Now this community has rallied how people have come together. I mean, it's, you know, I've, I've hugged people and prayed with people and thanked people that I've never laid eyes on before this weekend. Through our travels, we've also seen crews here with FEMA as well as the Red Cross here to help people out in their time of need. To find out how you can help out, you can visit WRL.com. Destiny Patterson, WRL News, Mitchell County. FEMA has launched a rumor response page to combat the spread of misinformation online about Helene. <laughs> State and federal agencies and nonprofits have been the target of what they say are false social media rumors since Helene hit the western part of the state. Red Cross posted on X saying the misinformation, quote, disrupts our ability to deliver critical aid and affects the disaster workers who have put their own lives on hold to assist those in need. A spokesperson for the American Red Cross says misinformation can be frustrating. 
I think especially when it comes to disasters of this magnitude, uh, I think it does become an issue uh, simply because a response to something of this size takes a lot of moving parts. And unfortunately, it takes time. Uh, and, and that is frustrating, I think, for a lot of people. If you want to see what they do or how the money is spent, you can go on their website or call them at 800 Red Cross. The FEMA rumor response website recommends finding trusted sources of information, sharing only information from those sources and discouraging others from sharing information that is not verified. You can find it on FEMA.gov in the disaster and assistance section. An emergency landing in Las Vegas, fire on a frontier flight, flames shooting off the plane as it landed. WRS Michelle McConaughey is here now with that video and how this could have happened. Michelle, what an ordeal for those passengers. Oh my gosh, it was so scary, Renee. We want to show you the moment that frontier flight landed in Vegas on Saturday after a mysterious mid-air emergency led to what airport officials call a hard landing. You see it here. A spokesperson for the airline said the pilots detected smoke at as that plane was landing and they declared an emergency, 190 passengers and seven crew members were on board. Some saying there was severe turbulence as that plane was approaching the runway. They waited on the plane for an hour with no AC as firefighters worked to put out the flames. Finally evacuated, they say they saw the plane's tires had blown out every single tire. Experts say this investigation will be complex. This was a very serious uh, incident. Something happened in that cockpit that created smoke and really challenged that flight crew. Luckily, nobody was hurt in all of this, but there are still a lot of unanswered questions. The cause of the incident is currently under investigation. 618 is the time right now. We got one system out, another one coming in that we are tracking down in the tropics, Elizabeth. Yeah, it's something that we always hate to see, but especially just back to back major hurricanes for Florida. And this one was going this one is going to be rapidly intensifying up to Cat 4 in the next 24 hours. It's likely to make landfall as a Cat 3 late Wednesday, early Thursday morning. No direct impact in North Carolina. North Carolina is not in the forecast fan, but we'll definitely see some heavy surf, some beach erosion, maybe some over wash of Highway 12, some coastal showers and rip current danger. Let's take a look at where the storm is right now. It is starting to form a little bit of an eye here. Uh, it has winds at 100 miles per hour. It's 750 miles away from Tampa right now. Um, and Tampa and, of course, the west coast of Florida here all in that forecast fan. Uh, and uh, the forecast fan will take it on out. And you can see how the fan itself is south of North Carolina. So our, our impact here most likely will be minimal. Um, we'll continue to watch that because it's close enough that it's something that we'll keep an eye on. And of course, we'll be following what they're expecting down in Florida. Eight to 12 foot storm surge. Now, where the center of the circulation comes on shore, it's typically to the right side of that that we see the bulk of the damage. Uh, and so we'll be watching again, especially from Tampa southward. But um, just devastating storm surge. Of course, really heavy rainfall, looking at five to 10 inches of rainfall. And of course, category three winds well over 100 miles per hour. So um, this is going to be an extremely destructive storm storm for the west coast of Florida. Um, we don't get into that heavy rainfall unless the path changes significantly. We're talking about maybe a tenth of an inch of rainfall along our coast. Again, some erosion is possible. The winds along the coast likely to be anywhere from around 30 to 40 miles per hour. That's not enough to cause a lot of damage, but definitely, um, you know, we'll toss some things around. For us, 15 to 20 mile per hour wind gusts, and that's not enough to cause any problems. So again, rip current, erosion, some breezy conditions along the coast. Um, for our area, looking at gusts 15 to 20, 25 miles per hour. Western North Carolina stays dry, a little bit breezy, but nothing impactful there. Thank goodness. Uh, we take a look at what's happening here this morning. Skies are mostly clear in Fayetteville, Raleigh, Apex, uh, and Chapel Hill. So it's a nice start out there this morning. We have the warm air sliding out. The cold front crosses our area around the middle of the day, and the cool air moves in. This front will keep the storm to the south and help push it away from North Carolina. And so that's the, one of the reasons that we're not likely to see much of an impact impact here. Take a look at these temperatures. 69 Thursday, 68 on Friday. We're going to see some chilly mornings in the 40s, and I'll show you what the humidity or dew points look like along with that too coming up. And I think a lot of people have been waiting for this weather.
Oh, you and me both. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Thanks, Elizabeth. Here's what you can expect as you get ready to head out this morning. Uh, the crash that have been monitoring this morning on Glasscock Street and Wake Forest Road just cleared in the last 30 seconds or so, which is good news. So let's head outside and show you what's going on. For those of you taking the southern loop of the Beltline, you're getting ready to head out. I-40 and Rock Quarry Road, everything flowing nicely in both directions this morning. Uh, so now the problem to report. Also around Wake County and surrounding communities, all the major routes are delay-free at this hour so that is good news for sure listen you're heading out this morning you can always tune us in on the radio at 101.5 hd3 you do have a couple of other options as well 99.3 fm in raleigh and 96.5 fm in durham ken thanks zach galifianakis comes home pushing for more help for the area where he grew up The actor is now calling for some more supports of the people in Western North Carolina. We'll tell you how he's doing that after Helene. Plus, today marks one year since the deadly Hamas attacks on Israel. How the local Jewish community is remembering the lives lost in the attack on the music festival in Israel. And here's a look at your winning lottery numbers. What's Trending Report, sponsored by Rug and Home. The Queen of Genovia is back. Ken Smith here now. <laughs> What's Trending on our Monday, Ken? Jeff and Renee Prince's Diaries 3, now in production at Disney. And Hathaway confirming the project on social media, writing in the caption, Miracles Happen. It's not clear, though, when it will hit theaters. The original film came out in 2001, followed by the sequel in 2004. So a lot of fans excited <laughs> about this. You know, Anne Hathaway is going to be pretty busy because she's also working mm -hmm. on The Devil Wears Prada, too. So reprising <laughs> her two iconic roles. This is incredible. She seems super excited, though, about this one. Mm -hmm. uh, I know. Hey, LeBron James trending this morning. He and his son, Brody, made NBA history during a preseason game against the Phoenix Suns. The two became the first father-son duo to play in an NBA game at the same time. LeBron posted on X about the moment saying, Wow, that was surreal. <laughs> Super surreal. You know, it happened in the second quarter. His son checks in the game. Mm. I can't even imagine what's going through his head. And uh, LeBron just said uh, it's a, it could be a father's dream, you know, to have something like right. that happen. They're the first duo to get that done. Yeah. So. I mean, it happens in corporate America all the time, right? Son takes mm -hmm. over for dad, but on the NBA court? At that Huge. level of yeah. ability, it's uh, pretty impressive there. Ken, thanks. Wake Forest is holding its national night out tonight. It's happening from 5 to 7.30 in the parking lot of the Joyner Park Community Center. There'll be a DJ, games, and food there. Capitol Boulevard is now back open in Raleigh. This is just hours after a nasty crash killed a driver. What police say may have caused that deadly crash? And we're starting with clear skies and comfortable conditions. Look at our mostly sunny cloud cover forecast. I'll show you what it's going to feel like as our humidity starts to drop. Coming up.